All right. Well, good morning or good afternoon for whoever's listening. Uh, we are on episode actually 20 of our podcast, Complacency Kills, uh, from Contech Industries. Again, I am Mike Witt. Um, I'm our director of sales and marketing here. And today we have a very, very special guest, Mr. Robert Durish. Hello, everybody. So, Robert, why don't you uh, do a quick introduction for those that may not know you, and then uh, we can kick it off and kind of talk about some surveillance. Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Durish. I'm a sales engineer here at Contech. Uh, I deal everything with anything technology, really, uh, cameras, um, some perimeter security, um, really, you know, anything that you guys need that has a little nerd to it, I'm here for you. Okay. So you're like, uh, you're like the geek squad. Yeah. All sure. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Everyone needs one. Everyone needs one. So, well, really the purpose of the, our chat today is, you know, something we've done at Contech over the last uh, couple of years is start integrating more and more, um, of the electronic side of security. Um, everyone knows us well for, uh, you know, concrete, steel, uh, and different armor systems and stuff like that. Um, but we've continued to expand. Um, obviously brought you on as an awesome teammate to, to help in that endeavor. The best teammate. Um, and since then, we've, we've actually made a lot of progress. Um, we've partnered with quite a few manufacturers of different sensor and surveillance equipment manufacturers, such as FLIR, Axis, Bosch, uh, and the list kind of goes on from there. Um, and so... As we've been doing this, uh, you know, we've been wanting to communicate f to our customers um, the the importance and the benefits um, that you gain from having surveillance systems, right? And that that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, but that there's benefits to everyone from operating a school, a hospital, all the way up to protecting, you know, nuclear material. Um, and there's a place for for all these different components um, to assist them in their security mission. So. With that kind of being said, you know, I would like to kind of kick off and talk about what your experience is with cameras, um, and and how um, the integration of you know a basic camera system, everything from you know whatever a Chinese wise little camera all the way up to high end FLIR systems, how all those can integrate potentially integrate into a centralized system that is scalable for our customers to use. So can you give us some background on, on kind of what your experience is with that? Sure, yeah. So I've been uh, in the security industry dealing with uh, cameras for almost 10 years. Um, you know, I've done uh, everything from, you know, perimeter scene cameras to uh, some under vehicle cameras, kind of real specialty. Um, you know, one of the things that we worked hard once I got on here uh, was to kind of have a a good spread of products for the different industries that we work in. Um, so like you said, we have that high end, uh, super high end FLIR with the uh, thermal cameras. Uh, and then we also uh, have uh, some products for schools that we think would work really well, uh, easy to work for, uh, with administration, um, not much training needed. Um, you know, so we, we tried to kind of spread our, uh, our partnerships out to kind of meet all the different uh, you know, needs of our customers. Sure. So um, can you kind of delineate, though, what the big difference is between like something like Forcato, which we use for commercial applications, schools, things of that nature, and kind of the user interface and the security experience a customer might get from that versus running, you know, the FLIR latitude system and, and having a bunch of different sensor inputs for yeah, and, and basically it comes down to um, investment, right, and also just need of the customer. Um, so with Verkata, one of the great things with that is is everything is stored on the edge, so on the camera itself, and then also uh, backs up to the cloud for analytic. Um, you know, with that one, you don't need all of the, as much infrastructure to run it. Basically, the uh, NVR uh, is in the cloud. Uh, so you're not worrying about keeping servers up to date. You're not needing like that IT team to be there. They don't uh, need you on standby. Yeah, you know, so, you don't need yeah. the Geek Squad uh, 800 number uh, on on call. Um, also, it's very the when we first looked at it, the first thing we thought of with Verkata was it's a, it's almost like an iPhone. It's just super intuitive, um, especially with administration changes and things like that. That was important to us so that someone leaves and all of a sudden now it's you know, you need to be retrained. It, it's all very simple to use. Right. 
Uh, then when you get up to more of the high end systems, you know, your Axis, FLIR, Bosch, um, you know, you need that infrastructure in there or you're, you're tying it into your own system. So it's just, there's a lot more involved in it and a lot more investment in it um, that obviously wouldn't potentially be there for a commercial business or a school. Um, yeah. So we just try to, you know, push that gamut so that we have really everything our customers might need. Yeah. And actually, you, you, you mentioned in there uh, AI, and that's obviously the big buzzword for everyone in the last, you know, several years. So um, so what kind of impacts does it have in terms of analytics um, for companies like Verkata? I know FLIR, I, actually all of them run some sort of analytics, right, uh, to a varying degree. So can you give some examples of like what are they actually looking for? Yeah, so analytics? most most of your cameras uh, are going to be looking um you know, people detection, vehicle detection, things like that. Um, some of them will have specialty, you know, facial recognition to be able, uh, especially Verkata does a really good job at that where you uh, can make a profile for someone and then you can see all the times that they've been in your building, where they've been. Axis has a lot of different uh, apps, they call them, basically uh, that are made by Axis and also made by third parties. Um, so really anything you can think of, these cameras can kind of detect, whether it's perimeter security, whether it's line cues for commercial businesses, yeah. um, really, you know, gunshot detection, really anything, um, you know, someone's kind of made an app for it. So um, getting the community involved is really, you know, progressing things quickly. Oh, for sure. Like, I think, um, I, I know Verkata has something similar and quite a few manufacturers do, but uh, where I personally saw it, uh, a company that FLIR used to work with, they still may, I'm not quite sure, but BriefCam, they had great analytics years back where, yeah, they'd have awesome demonstrations where there'd be like a highway with hundreds and hundreds of cars passing over several hours. And you say, I just want to see the red sedans coming over from this time to this time. It can automatically just exfil all the other cars and only show you um, the red sedans passing from the hours of noon to five, or yeah. whatever the case may be. And that's where uh, this, you know, video analytic AI, all that is really improved a lot because a lot of this now is done on camera, yeah. where before you used to do your video stream, you get it back to your NVR, maybe your NVR would have some analytic or you'd have a, a you know, a, a secondary server that would do it. So there was definitely some latency there. Um, now with everything or most people running um, your video analytic AI on the device, things are pretty instantaneous, which is awesome, yeah. especially for yeah. security. And the right? same thing with, uh, I know FLIR, Axis, and Bosch, and the three of them definitely have quite a few cameras that do it all on board the camera itself yeah. before it even reaches uh, whatever viewing platform that they're they're using. So it's yeah. pretty. And the cool thing about that is to all of your uh, alerts. Uh, I know I was showing you earlier, I was playing with the Axis camera doing uh, some uh, person detection. Yeah. Um, and it'll actually record the, you know, the AI uh, interfaces and whatnot into your NVR. Um, so you'll get those squares and those little highlights. Um, so it's all kind of recorded, which is awesome too. So, so for having things like uh, AI or analytics built into the camera systems and then having camera systems themselves um, with a variety of other access control and sensor platforms that, that can be all integrated together to give a clear picture for uh, the end user of what's happening at their facility or any area they're responsible for securing. Um, what, what kind of impact does it have on the end user? You know, I mean, the idea of it is, right, it makes their, their job easier, right? Because no one can watch everything at once. Um, so adding that analytic part of it, you know, not that you're going to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, but at the same point, it's going to be, you know, no blinking, no anything, you know, so uh, it's, it's, it's really there to help the, the end yeah, user. It's a huge you know? force multiplier. Yeah. And over the course of time, um, dependent on obviously the, you know, the customer and what they're trying to achieve, um, you know, a, a, a lot of places obviously want to increase security, but they also, they don't want to increase payroll to have actual human beings sitting there performing those tasks. Um, so yeah, that's been a huge trend that we've seen and we'll continue to see. Um, so, you know, and, and the last piece I want to kind of hit on is stuff that you guys should be looking into. Again, a bunch of companies do it or have a version of it, but you know, having a PSIM system, which is a physical security information management system, which is what essentially what most of these companies do now, which is you know, they're taking information from, you know, the hundred of cameras you have deployed and all of the card readers and access control and biometric sensors and stuff you might have. 
throughout your facility and essentially prioritizing that information that they present to you with AI and analytics. So, um, you know, you know, the security officers aren't having a, a, you know, a ding or a beep or an alert going off every other yeah, second because there's some over, form of overload, activity, yeah. right? So, um, so definitely something um, for those in the security market that are looking to improve their surveillance experience at their, um, at their facility. Uh, definitely give us a call because um, there's a lot of there's a lot of manufacturers out there. There's a lot of opportunity out there, um, but you really have to n define and narrow down what exactly you're looking for because um, everyone kind of does the same thing. It's kind of like you know everyone kind of builds a sedan, but there's you know once you get into a sedan, there's a huge difference you know between the Corolla and you know the the, the M3, right? Yeah. Um, so um, you have to really define what you're looking for and how you want to get there, but. Um, Robert is a great guy to start with. So yeah. if you guys need anything, just give Robert a shout. Uh, you can reach him on our website at info at contactindustries.com. Um, and uh, we look forward to hopefully getting out to your site, doing a walk down and seeing how we can help you guys. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely here for you. And any questions you might have, I'm happy to help. All right. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.